Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's installment, we look at the whiskies to look out for in the month of March. Run the video. All right then folks, let's get into this video, shall we? And I can't believe we're already doing whiskey to look out for, for the month of March already. It just felt like Christmas was a couple of weeks ago. However, that's generally how time works, sadly. So we are looking for the whiskies that mostly come out in the month of March. Sometimes uh, distributors can delay that process, or sometimes they might come out a little bit earlier or a little bit later. So it's always helpful to go back and watch some of the previous episodes for like the whiskies to look out for in January and February, because some of them might have got pushed out a little further into March. So if you like today's video, don't forget to hit that like button. And I'm also making a request to you folks out there. So my request is if you're someone who's involved in a local distillery, a uh, craft distillery, and you would like maybe a new release for what you're doing there in your distillery, talked about in the Whiskey Store Out for a month, videos then let me know shoot me an email down below the link is in the description down there and then we can try to connect and then if there's something new that's coming out for you i would like to try to incorporate at least one craft stories new release into all of these videos just you know i think it's a good way of you know putting some of the smaller craft stories on the map as best as i can it's not much i can offer but i would really like to do that moving forward so again if you're one of those folks please let me know and then we'll see what we can do and see if we can get some of that information out to the public or the viewers of the whiskey cove with that being said let's get into the seven whiskies to look out for for the month of march and the last one's a super rare and six thousand dollar ball so you want to stick around for that guy However, first up is a bottle that we recently did a review on, kind of, and that is Bernheim Original Kentucky Straight Wheat Whiskey Barrel Proof. Yes, I believe that they only seldomly used to do this at the distillery there in Heaven Hill, but now they're making it a nationwide product, and they are starting out with A223. So it's going to have kind of like that code, the same as the Larsenary Barrel Proofs and the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. This one is going to come in at 59.4% ABV or 118.8 proof. So it's not quite hitting the heights of some of the Elijah Craig's, which generally are, I would say, around 65 plus. However, kind of sets me maybe more so with the, some of the last knees we're at. But however, still is barrel proof. So maybe that's the highest that they could have got these specific ones. But as we see the, with them get more put out, like the B's and the C's, and again next year, maybe we'll see a lot of variation between those two there. So the regular small batch one is about $30. It is age stated or seven year age statement. However, it doesn't say the age statement on the bottle for the barrel proof one, but they do state in the press release that it's aged between seven to nine years. But you may as well just put it on the bottle, you know, even if it is it's still aged at least seven years. I think it's just cool to put on the bottle. I'm not sure why Elijah Craig do that because they also do it with the, uh, I don't, I'm not sure why Heaven Hill do that because they also do it with the Elijah Craig. They say that's a 12 year barrel proof product, but they don't put it on the, the bottle. And I think it would just be cool to put on the bottle. However, that's not what they do. So this is coming in at 51% wheat. 37% corn and then 12% malted barley. It is a wheat whiskey, so it needs to be above the 50% threshold of 51%. Um, MSRP on this bad boy is going to be $65, so not too bad. I think that's the MSRP of last scenario as well, so sitting right around that category. There's not many competitors to this sort of whiskey. The only one I can think of is probably the Old Elk Double Wheat. That runs around about hundred dollars as well so this is definitely filling a bit of a niche in the market i've tried and like i said i reviewed this small batch one it does have a small wheaty grainy not grainy a wheaty like cereal note to it and which was okay it was nice and rounded out you'd have to look for a little bit so it'll be interesting to see what they've done with that because out of barrel proof strength that note is going to be amplified so i really want to get this bottle and kind of see exactly how that plays into this so if you're lucky enough to find it we should start seeing it ramping up more and more and more and as they go through the year you'll see the extra additions so hopefully you folks out there will get lucky and if you like wheat whiskeys this is definitely one for you Staying with Heaven Hill, next up we have Elijah Craig A123. Yes, I believe this should drop maybe in February, but sometimes with Elijah Craig and Heaven Hill products, it does take a bit of a while for them to come through distribution and come more nationwide, which is why we held off doing this a little while. 
Uh, we're not really going to talk too much about the bottle because the bottle is the same every year well not every year but has been for quite a while now this is going to be the a1 like i said a123 batch coming in with 78 percent corn 12 percent malted barley and then 10 percent rye this is like i previously said this is a 12 year barrel proof product today uh, this release is going to be 62.8 percent abv or 125.6 proof so that's about a, a normal kind of ABV or proof for the Elijah Craig barrel proofs. Sometimes they go higher, sometimes they go lower, but they more or less sit between 63% and like 66%. So this is kind of much closer or right in line. MSRP, like I said, is $70 for this bottle. In Colorado, Elijah Craig barrel proof, store pick, single barrel toasted, seem to be just about everywhere. So you're, you're someone who likes Heaven Hill products like Henry McKenna, Heaven Hill 7, and the Elijah Craig Glass and Irish barrel proofs. If you can make it to Colorado, do a little bit of hunting, I'm sure you'll find a bunch of that stuff. However, I know around the country that's not the same, but in Colorado, we're lucky enough that we can get some of that stuff there. So that was Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A123. And next up is a new release from Penelope. We talked a little bit about Penelope on the show before with their architect, and they also had, what was the newest release that they did? It was the Valencia Orange one that they did. I didn't get a chance to try that. I think, I mean, maybe you need to go and just buy it at a bar or something because it's such a unique finished whiskey. However, they are back with their whiskey finishing series and this is going to be Penelope Rio. So a little bit of a uh, throw to Rio coming from Brazil. This is going to be 49% uh, alcohol or 98 proof. This is their bourbon mash bill uh, paired with the world's finest wine casks. Didn't, what are the information I was tr tr found didn't go into what specific wine casks they were, just said the world's best wine casks, so maybe it's finished multiple times. And then they double cask finish it after that with American honey and then Brazilian oak. I'm assuming that, and this is just an assumption, that the Brazilian oak is Amburana, so that seems to be a, quite a, a popular finish in wood lately, and a lot of companies, or a lot of brands and distilleries are using that. So they're saying that it's kind of like a carnival in a bottle, hence the name Rio. MSRP on this, I wasn't able to find it, but if I remember the Valencia Orange, it was about $70. With all the finishes with this, expect it might be a little bit higher. Uh, findability should be a pretty easy bottle to find. I think Penelope do a great job at getting really good distribution and getting that bottle out there nationwide. The architect that Penelope does is fantastic, and also some of their toasted series stuff uh, is awesome as well, and they're mainly the ones I've been able to try. However, if you're looking for something just a little bit different, Maybe this is a bottle view Penelope Rio. I'll keep my eye out for that. I won't probably buy it, but you know, if I can get a taste of that, I probably would, just because how unique it sounds. You know, it's finished in wine, different bunch of wine casks, and then double cast finished again in American Honey and Amburana barrels, which is unheard of, really. So then next up on the list, we have Jack Daniels, and we have Jack Daniels 12. So another Jack Daniels that we probably won't get or find. I was fortunate to get the Jack Daniels 10, and we did a Jack Daniels taste through recently, and that was in it, and I was uh, pleasantly surprised. It had a lot more no bourbon style notes, as opposed to maybe the Jack Daniels typical sweeter notes. Not to say that Jack Daniels is or isn't bourbon, that's a debate for a different time. However, Jack Daniels tends to lead a little bit more sweeter. However, the 10 year tastes a little bit more oaky. But this is the 12 year, so you get an extra two years. And not only are you get an extra two years, you get a bump in proof as well, because it's, because it's going to 107 proof which is 53.5% like the antique 107 Weller. So the only downside to this bottle thus far, I can see it, obviously distribution is a, is a big issue, but it is coming in in a 700 milliliter bottle. So the 10 year was a 750 milliliter bottle, but this is gonna be a 700 milliliter bottle. Seems like Jack Daniels are sticking with this trend because they started it with the bonded and the triple mash. Then I believe, if I'm correct, that they moved into the American single malt double oak, uh, double double barreled and that was a 700 milliliters and then they're sticking with this so you are losing those 50 milliliters and that stuff adds up over time especially if that price isn't changing so let's look at the front label here traditional jack daniels right in there font with the black and gold really nice design much like the 10 year goes on to say where it's distilled in lynchburg tennessee and then the proof coming in batch one also as well it's worth noting that this is an 80% corn, 12% malted barley, and then 8% rye. So it's so what I was reading, I think it was a recent interview with um, 
Mr. Fletcher down there, you know, the, the, head, the head distiller down there, he was talking a little bit about uh, before Jack Daniels or Jesper Jack Daniels died, he put out a lot of age stated whiskey up into about 20 years and they were hoping to try to replicate that. So what we might see moving through the years is, is these Jack Daniels additions to kind of just keep going up and up and up from 10 to 12, who knows what's next and then maybe try to put it all the way out to 20, which would be really fun and interesting to see there. So if you take a little look at the back label here, it says our master distiller has hand selected a small batch of 12 year old whiskey that's reminiscent of our founder, Mr. Jack a rare spirit unique and complex i'm told this is going to be a very small release or at least i'm not i haven't been told what i've been able to find on the internet that this isn't going to be even as big as the 10 year old release so if you're able to find one of these obviously the price might be a bit of a sticking point that one was around about 70 dollars. i think this might i'll take a little bit of a bump maybe 80 to 90 dollars. i would definitely jump on that especially with a bump in proof because now it's at like 53.5 percent alcohol for a 12 year bourbon that's a fantastic age statement with that abv so i think this is going to be a real hitter and definitely on my list of whiskies to try to get within the next few months then so that was jack daniels aged 12 years then moving from Tennessee back to Kentucky, but no, not to Bourbon. It's the newest release from Yellowstone, and that is their American Single Malt Whiskey. Again, we're seeing another trend with uh, a lot of distilleries putting out American Single Malt, which is great. It's another whiskey to add to kind of the American uh, liquor market here. We have Bourbon, we have rye, and now we have American Single Malt that seems to be taking off quite a lot. Truth be told, for me, it's not my cup of tea. I think it just tastes a little bit too grainy and kind of like hay for me. It's just not my palate whatsoever, so I can't really recommend any good ones for you. However, I think if you haven't tried American Single Malt before, this might be a good place to start, mainly because the MSRP on this guy is gonna be 54 point, uh, $54.99, so quite affordable. And Yellowstone have stated that it's gonna be out nationwide and it should be pretty findable there. So that's the main reasons why I think this is a good starting point because you're not spending too much money. And again, it's coming in at around about 54% alcohol or 108 proof, so it's a decent ABV. It's gonna be a 100% barley malt, so that is gonna be the mash bill. And then they also go on to say that it's been perfectly aged in new charred American oak barrels. Smooth yet complex whiskey rounds the palate with notes of honey, dates, spice pear, and with a strong oak and cinnamon finish. So some really interesting taste their notes there again i don't like american single malt so i'm probably not going to buy this but if you're someone who wants to try american single malt or you do like this for 54.99 you can't go wrong next up we have whistle pig age 10 years piggy bank rye so this might has been this might have come to a lot of states already so you might have already seen this but some of the official launch dates were more so for March and the time that again distribution catches up, you're probably more so gonna see it in March. So this, what's really cool about this bottle, and I'll put it on the screen now, is that it looks, it's in the shape of a pig. <laughs> it's a really unique and fun looking design on the bottle. Like I said, it is age 10 years, so you do get an age 10 year statement with the whistle pig right there. And also, <laughs> From what I was looking at, the whiskey comes out of the pig's butt, which is, I guess, quite cool as well. And also, not only is it um, a 10 years, but it's a one litre bottle as well. So you get a little bit more. However, the MSRP is $200. So for $200 for this fun decanter, it's pretty cool. It's gonna look great on the shelf. I don't know what the whiskey tastes like, but at least you get a one litre for it. And there's not been much, there's not been anything like this for a long time that I can remember in, in terms of a decanter. So, Whistle Pig goes on to say, with the piggy bank 10 year rye, the company embraces their image. The decanter is based off a 19th century Berkshire bitter pig, with the liquid inside giving off notes of mint, dill, truffle, black pepper and tobacco. Bottled inside the pig at 110 proof, it is appropriately oaky, and the finish is sure to be in short supply. So again, super unique bottle. I think I've seen these starting to hit in Colorado. I had the opportunity to buy one, but I'm personally, for the whistle pigs that I've had tried, and, and albeit I've only tried some of the entry level ones, so maybe this isn't 
like a fair representation of a whistle pick. It just wasn't my part. But if you need to, yeah, need to go back in and buy some, maybe some of the more expensive ones, which I hear good things about. However, this is expensive. This is $200. But, you know, maybe it might be worth your money if you're looking for something fun. And I think that would be a really cool whiskey gift for maybe like a whiskey friend or whatnot. So then that brings us to our last bottle. And this is quite a bottle. And that is going to be Micta Celebration Sour Mash. So this is the first time that Mictas have done this since 2019. So it's been on hiatus for a little while. It was supposed to be released last year, but there was uh, there was some supply chain issues with some of the production brand, and maybe it didn't go on to say what they were short on, but it could have been like the lid, the label, the bottle. Something along the production had stalled, which is why it's coming out in 2023. This is coming in at 56.4% ABV or 112.8 proof. So pretty decent ABV there. There's only going to be 328 bottles released. Very limited indeed. So, like I said, this is the first release since 2019. There's going to be seven barrels in total. Uh, from They're going to age from 12 years old to 30 years old, so it's going to be a blend between them. And also, the, the barrels are going to be three bourbon barrels and four rye. However, the MSRP price on the Mictus Sour Mash, Cel Celebration Sour Mash, is going to be $6,000. So if you're someone who maybe is looking to spend that amount of money on a very special bottle, then this may be the bottle for you. I think on last episode we talked about uh, the whiskey they were sending up in space. That was a lot more than this. So if you're looking for something a little bit more grounded in, by way of price, and by way of location, I guess, then, like I said, this might be the bottle for you. You better act fast because they are they are in short supply. Whether you might have to go down to the distillery to get there or you buy them online through Mictas, you'll go online and just check out all the information at Mictas' website there. However, if you do get one, then I hope you enjoy it. I hope you keep it and save it for a special occasion. So that is all we have time for today, folks. No honorable mentions today. And again, I want to remind the folks at home, if you're someone who's involved with a local distillery, a uh, craft distillery, and you want to send us some information about maybe a new release coming out in the next couple of months, we'll get it involved with this video, and at least we'll uh, share it with the Whiskey Co. subscriber base, or at least viewers. And that's all we have time for, and as we drink through the world's whiskeys, one glass at a time, cheers. <laughs>